Explanation of Malachi, Chapter 3, Verses 1 to 4. This is Part 2. Malachi, Chapter 3, Verses 1 and 2. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord, whom ye seek, shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. Two persons are here disclosed to view, the messenger and the Lord. The messenger is to precede the coming of the Lord. He is to prepare the way, then the Lord is to appear. And who could this messenger be, if not the one whom the Lord names? He declares, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Malachi 4 verse 5. This messenger of the covenant, of the promise, antitypical Elijah the prophet shall prepare the way. He shall restore all things. As he prepares the way, the Lord will suddenly come to his temple, to his church. And what is his work to be? To purify or cleanse his people by weeding the unrepented sinners from among them. The question, but who may abide the day of his coming? solemnly declares that we had better now get busy and do what it takes to make us stand before the cleansing begins. Whom in particular will he purify? Let us read verse 3. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. The Levites, you know, comprise the tribe from which came the priesthood, the ministers of the Lord. And since this prophecy is to meet its complete fulfillment in our day, the figure is clear. The Levites, the ministers of the Lord in our day, are to be purified. What then? Verse 4. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord, as in the days of old and as in former years. This verse implies that the offerings which we now bring to the Lord are not pleasing to Him, not pleasing as in times past. Here we have the glorious promise that not long hence there shall be a pure ministry, a pure people, a people without guile in their mouths, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Ephesians 5 verse 27. Those who do not measure to this standard will not stand. Thereafter no sinner will stand in their midst, for henceforth, says the Lord, there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Isaiah 52 verse 1. This glorious future is, moreover, reiterated by the spirit of prophecy in our day. Here it is. Only those who have withstood temptation in the strength of the Mighty One will be permitted to act a part in proclaiming it, the third angel's message, when it shall have swelled into the loud cry. Review and Herald, November 18, 1908. But the days of purification of the church are hastening on apace. God will have a people pure and true. In the mighty sifting soon to take place, we shall be better able to measure the strength of Israel. The signs reveal that the time is near when the Lord will manifest that his fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor. The church purified shall nevertheless triumph and march to victory. Fair as the moon, clear as the sun, and terrible as an army with banners, she is to go forth into all the world, conquering and to conquer. Prophets and Kings, page 725.